Our first step is centering. In order to center, I'm going to run the wheel at near full speed. I'd like to get my right fist wet, grab my right wrist with my left hand, and apply pressure down on top of the clay. I need to hold this hand steady, and when I feel the friction of the clay dry against my skin, I'll get more water. Don't flatten this out too much. This top portion is centered now, but the side is still quite wobbly. So what I'm gonna do is start pushing in on the side of the clay with my left palm, or actually the heel of my hand here, right above the wrist. I'll push into the clay at seven o'clock, and I'll push down on top of the clay with my right hand as I do so. More pressure from the left though. As you do that, the clay becomes still, and that tells you that it's centered. You then need to gently relax your pressure and remove your hands. Don't pull your hands away quickly or it will go off center again. Now, if I push harder on my left hand, the clay grows taller. I still need pressure with my right hand or the clay will just go off the wheel. But you see how that raised up. If I want to flatten this shape down, I'm going to push harder with my right hand down on the top, and you can see that I wind up with a wide puck shape. If centering is uncomfortable on the side of your left hand, the problem is that you're pushing down onto the wheel head with too much force. Your left hand only needs to push into the clay, not down into the wheel head. It's not moving. Um, save that force for pushing in. In order to brace your hand, what you're going to do is tuck your elbow into your hip, into your ribs, into your leg, and push with your body into the clay. That way it's not just about your arm strength, but you can involve some larger muscle groups to get that clay centered. Once you have those basics, you can really center in 30 seconds or less. All right, I'm gonna be showing centering and opening up of a form. I am throwing with a plastic bat today. That means the bat has to be dry and the clay has to be dry. You wanna make sure that you affix this clay to the wheel head very well and don't have it flying off and hitting the person next to you. So as always, we're gonna slam it down a little bit. I like to give a little bit of a press here. As you progress, you may not be uh, you know, doing this step but I like to make sure that that clay is affixed to this wheel head. So now that I've got it pressed a little bit, I'm gonna take my right index finger. I always create a seal there. It's something that helps the clay not only stay affixed to the wheel head, but again, not fly off and hit the person next to you. Once you see that there is no shadow under the, or in the connection point between the clay and the wheel head, you are set to add moisture. Because this form is not open, you can be pretty liberal with the moisture that you add. Once it's open, we're going to be using a lot less. I've got it secured to the wheel head. It's all set to get slick. And now I can start to uh, center the clay. My left hand is going to be right here on the side. I'm using more of this portion here of my hand in order to apply pressure. And what I'm gonna be doing is pushing from the bottom left to the top right. So in a diagonal, I'm gonna be trying to focus that left hand's movement. As far as my right hand, I'm gonna have my right hand positioned right above the clay here. In this area is gonna be where I'm mostly applying pressure in order to augment the clay and get it more into center. The wheel should be going as fast as you feel comfortable and that does need to get as fast as the wheel can go. The faster the wheel is going, the faster your hands can move. I've got the wheel going full speed. I like to hold my sponge so it'll always be tucked there under my thumb. Adding a little bit more moisture and I'm gonna go ahead and get my left hand set. Now my elbow is secure in my thigh or on my hip. My arms are in. It's almost like you're going to have little T-Rex arms, but you want to make sure that your elbows are anchored before you start putting your hands on the clay. 
At first, I like to just kind of rest my hands there and feel how off-centered it is. So a very important part here of centering is remembering that if your arms are still, your clay will be centered. If you are able to wedge the clay, you have enough strength to center the clay. It just really depends on applying that strength very particularly in order to get this to be a still piece of clay. So left hand on the side, right hand on top, wheel going as fast as possible, arms anchored and tucked in. I am going to start applying pressure. It's not so much just my arms, my whole core is going into this. My hands are also making little movements and adjustments as I go. I can feel that it's still a little off centered, but I'm making sure that any of my movements are very slow into and slow out of. And once I feel like it's good, I'll slowly relax and ease away. I just spent all of that time centering the clay. If I move too fast after I've centered the clay, that's gonna create an uncenteredness and now I've gotta do it all over again. Just remember that with any movement on the wheel head, you're going slow into it and slow out of it and that will help you keep your clay centered throughout the throwing process. So I approach this with four basic steps. We're gonna center, drill down, pull our floor, pull our wall. After that, it's shaping, okay? Three consistent things that we're gonna go and focus on is keeping our clay nice and wet, keeping our wheel speed at medium, and then making sure that our elbows are down so that way you've got a really sturdy frame as you walk through these different steps. So, I'm gonna get my wheel going at medium speed. I'm gonna make sure that my clay is nice and wet. My hands are nice and wet. And then I'm gonna go and keep my elbows down, okay? So you can go and have these closer to your knees if that's comfortable and you wanna scoot your chair back, or you can have these closer to your hips and that's fine. Um, just find something that's comfortable and you may need to kind of shift around in order to do that. So I'm gonna go and put my right hand down first and my left hand over the top. I'm gonna cross my fingers at the back and my thumbs at the top. Using my fingers, I'm gonna pull in towards my belly and the pads of my palm are going to push down towards the center. So you're creating a little cage and you're compressing your clay. Both hands are putting the same amount of pressure on the clay at the same time. So as you do this, you're focusing on keeping that wheel speed even, your pressure constant, and as it starts to get sticky and dry, you wanna release your hands slowly and then add more water. You're gonna come back and apply that pressure nice and even, several seconds, and then release your hands. One thing that can help is to make sure that you've got contact with the wheel head, either with the sides of your palm or the fingertips of either hand, so that way your clay doesn't go and splay out. What you're aiming for when you're doing this is to make sure that your clay gets 100% exactly in the center. And so one way that you can check is the finger test. So if you stop your wheel, it's gonna look great. It's gonna look amazing, but you don't actually know if it's spinning evenly. So what you can do is while the wheel is spinning, take your finger, and you can run it along the side from bottom to top. And if it runs pretty true and smooth, you're good. If your finger bumps and jumps, it's not quite there yet. And you wanna get this all the way in the center because it doesn't get easier and it doesn't get better, as you may know, in the next part of the process. All right, let's get started with centering first. To begin, I think about having a nice clean wheel. We've already wedged up some clay. This one's about a pound, it might just be over a little bit. Um, I like thinking about centering and just all the basic throwing tips as giving you something, uh, each, each step builds upon another. And so if you can start with a nice round piece of clay, whether that's in this case kind of a sphere, um, or cone, excuse me, um, or a sphere, uh, it's just one step closer to being centered. And so go ahead and take the time once you're done wedging, pat that into a nice, kind of roundish form. I like starting out with these. Um, you'll see it has a little bit of a um, kind of an arch. That way when you go ahead and slap it down to the wheel, instead of having any air bubbles or water trapped underneath, it's just gonna seal really nice to the wheel head. So using your palm just to pat those out and then we're ready to go. Wheel head's clean. You can visually use these lines on the wheel head to get you close to center and just plop it down right in the middle Make sure you can just tap it a little bit onto it. Uh, as long as it's not wet, it should stick pretty well. To begin with, go ahead and get your hands wet. You can start moving the wheel. 
Uh, I recommend for throwing uh, de or for centering, depending on the size of the clay, generally the first stage as, as centering is probably the fastest speed. With that said, if you're using a larger piece or are still new to it, um, probably not taking it full speed is a good idea just so that it's under control. So I usually speed it up, back it off a little bit, and you'll see in just a bit how I, how I go about that. Go ahead and get water both on your hands as well as the clay. You want enough water that it's sliding past your hands easily. If it starts to build up friction or starts leaving a bunch of clay, it either means you need some, some more water or go ahead and clean off your hands so you're using pretty fresh, clean, wet hands there. For centering, first thing I want to think about is making sure it's secured down to the wheel. So I keep my hands low, uh, arms are either resting on my thighs, knees, or the splash pan. The first step I want to think about is pressing straight down, whether that's with both hands, one hand, you can do it in a lot of different ways, uh, but thinking about just that general pressure of pushing that chunk of clay down onto the wheel. You can see it starts to build up a little bit. It's a repetitive thing, but just keep your hands clean and a little bit wet. From there, I might just go ahead and seal that bottom down. So whether that's with the finger or simultaneously with your hands connected, you're just sealing that clay to the wheel, making sure again that there's no water getting underneath and that chance of it falling off are gonna be less likely. All right, so now that we've got it secured onto the wheel, I think about the clay in a couple different ways for centering. And so if I draw a line here, you've got kind of the top half, you've got your little middle half, and then you've got this bottom part here. You wanna consider all of those uh, pieces to, you know, as you're centering. And so when you're looking at the clay or feeling the clay, sometimes we'll notice the top half gets centered and it feels good, but there's still that little wobble at the base. We're trying to get all of that clay work together and nice and centered, kind of in the round. I think of it as it's quiet, and if I'm teaching younger kids, I talk about that heartbeat. And so if there's that little bump, 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 bump that comes around, that's what we're trying to get rid of and trying to have it nice and calm, steady in our hands. All right, so as I'm thinking of those three parts, I also think about the kind of pressure that I'm applying to the clay. Um, I think of it in three ways. I can either be pressing straight down on the top towards the wheel head, I can be pressing in from the side, and I can also be pressing down um, kind of at a 45 or at an angle. Um, and it's all three of those will make up that equal pressure of getting that clay nice and steady in the middle. Um, sometimes that's all at once. Other times that clay is gonna be moving around and it might need more on one side, perhaps the side, or it might need a little bit of attention at the top. But you're working those, those points and your hands to make sure that that's nice and steady and centered in the middle. So a couple ways of doing it. One way is creating a template or equal pressure with your hands, whether it's on either side. I like having my left hand, kind of the butt of the hand there, pressed up as the wheel's spinning, the clay is kind of uh, spinning right into that palm. And I'm just gonna be nice and stable, pushing in. What you'll see is as the pressure is going inward, that clay gets a little bit more centered at the side and starts to move up. And so again, having that hand on top, whether it's a fist, whether it's open, or I usually just kind of use my hands like that, but I am applying both pressure from the side as well as the top here. Um, and at the end of it, I'll always kind of finish with that nice stable template. My hands on the side, it's curved, so it's taking care of that shoulder. And I wanna end up with a doorknob shape. So it's rounder on the top, has round edges, and then cleaning up that base so that we're ready to do the next steps when we're done. And again, cleaning up the wheel head is always a nice idea. Uh, it's like cooking, uh, cleaning as you go usually makes it easier for the end. So we're just about ready. As I do my final one to make sure it's really centered, I think about is it quiet? Is it ready for the next step? Once I find that, that final spot, just pause for a little bit and let your hands go as slow as you can. Uh, usually if you're letting off quickly, one hand will let off before the other and it'll kind of get out of centered again. And so take that little pause and just release nice and slow and you'll be ready for the next step. Um, and before I get started, I like to sort of paddle my clay into a bit of a cone. I'm using my open right hand and hitting the side and hitting it flat against the bottom of my left palm. 
and this does a little bit of the centering for me and is going to make my next few steps much easier. So now that I've got that relatively even, I'm ready to stick it to the wheel. I'm going to look at the very center, stick it down firm, and now I'm going to use my hands squeezing at 3 and 9. I'm going to press down and wiggle, securing the clay to the wheel, and also sort of doing a little centering again as well. Um, the more time I take here, the much easier my centering process is going to be. So I've got that stuck really good. I am now going to get lots of water on here. I'm going to rub it in and create a sort of a layer of slip on my hands. And now I am ready to get started. So I'm going to scoop my stool back. I'm going to lean on my elbows, tuck in the strings of my sweatshirt. And I'm going to try to have my wheel going as fast as I can tolerate. Full speed is a little much for some, but the faster I go, the easier this is going to be. I'm going to anchor by leaning on my elbows. And my right hand, I'm going to use my open palm right around 3 or 4 o'clock. And my left hand is going to be on the opposite side. I'm going to touch my fingertips together to create a little house for the clay. That way I'm very stable and anchored. My left hand is going to push the clay into my right hand and I move my hands up together as one. It's really important that as I am squeezing and lifting, I don't allow my hands to wiggle. I'm going to go down one more time. I'm going to make this cone a little taller. And now I'm going to begin compressing. So I use my left hand now against the side, sort of near maybe 7 o'clock and my right hand is going to begin flattening. I like to use my open palm against the top of the clay and then my open left palm against the side. What this does is I push down and as I push down my left hand is driving in very very firmly keeping that clay in the middle. I keep going down until I feel the whole thing start to wiggle so right about now I found all my uncentered clay down here. I'm ready to cone back up. So I anchor my elbows, touch my fingertips together, push the clay into my right hand, and move my hands up together. My second cone should be lower than the first one, but sometimes I find the bottom is a little wiggly, so I'm going to press again down here at the bottom, gather up some of that wiggly clay, and now we compress down. We're going to compress down until we feel the clay really start to wiggle. I'm trying to find the uncentered clay. So the bottom part now is a little wiggly down here. I'm ready to cone up one more time. I don't need to go up very high. All I'm trying to do is push that wiggly clay up into the mound. That way I can get it centered. We're going to compress down. Sometimes I like to use my fist because I can't get my whole hand on top of the clay. And I'm pushing in really firmly with my left hand. If I keep my arms anchored and nice and steady, it's going to be relatively easy to center the clay. But if I let my hands wiggle, I'm never going to get it there. So I'm almost there. The last step is to shape my clay. So I'm going to switch hands. I was using my right hand on the top before. I'm right-handed, so I want my good hand now on the side. I'm going to push in slow and steady and press down with my left hand until my clay begins to create a little bit of a puck. And the flatter on the top and the sides, I find the better for my next few steps. But I found that I just made it wiggly again. So I need to do a little more coning and compressing to get rid of that wiggle. I'm going to squeeze in on the sides, gather it up and then we'll compress it back down again. Found some wiggly clay, we'll go back up, press down, very slowly release, switch hands. All right, and now I am centered. So I think my most important tip is keep your hands steady. Tensing up those arms, don't let them wiggle, It'll make centering go much easier.